I'm Ruby from DottyDelightful.com and today I'm coming to tell you about Brusho and Brusho are tiny little pots of watercolour pigment and when you open them inside you'll be able to see that there's all different kinds of pigment colours to make up the, um, the actual colour that's on the pot um, you can get these in all sorts of different colours, you can get them in a set or you can buy them on their own individually. So what you need is some watercolour paper. You can use these on ordinary paper, but watercolour paper is better. This is textured Bockingford paper and you can see it's got two textures on both sides. We're going to use the smooth side today. You will also need a wide paintbrush water, a tiny paintbrush or a pencil will do and pots of colour and a rag so or some tissue to mop up the excess. So today the colours that I'm using are turquoise, violet, sunburst lemon and crimson. So first of all, what you need to do is wet your page. I'm just going to stand my easel straight because if it's on an angle, it'll all run off. And I've also got my trusty apron on today as well, so I don't splash it all over because it does stain. Brusho is, um, it will wash out of um, darker things, but if you're wearing something light, it will stain. So first of all, you're going to wet your paper and don't scrimp on wetting your paper and make sure it's really nice and wet because the wetter it is the better effects that you're going to get now you can see i'm picking up the ink off the page underneath um, so if you're going to do this properly you want to have just plain paper underneath so once it's nice and wet and um, can you see how wet it is i've got a bit of a dry patch there like that some more then what you do is you take your small paintbrush or a pencil tip and you only want a little bit on it and you drop, drop it on can you see how it's all expanding and making that lovely pattern isn't it amazing and then just knock off the excess and then choose your different colour can you see how it all moves about and this is what I was on about before the different coloured pigments in it so even though this is turquoise it's got tiny little flecks of different colours in it I really love this and you can make the most awesome backgrounds with it Now, if you tip it onto your page and don't use this paintbrush technique, you end up with big blobs of colour, um, which is fine if that's the kind of thing that you're going for. But if you want it to do this spreading out thing, you, it is wise to use a, a paintbrush or the end of a pencil, like I was saying. And then I'll just use a tiny bit of yellow now you can see how the yellow isn't spreading as much as the other colors and that's because my paper is drying out slightly so all you need to do is take your paintbrush wet it let a bit run off and then squeeze the water over the top where the pigment has settled now you can see why we need a cloth and where any pigment is settled in a spot you can do this so what I'm going to do now is look how nice that is I'm just going to add a bit more, more turquoise to this middle section And it is all just experimenting and just playing with it there's no right or wrong um, parts to this and I love it for people who think that they're not very artistic because you can make such 
amazing um, backgrounds and pictures with it. So you see how it's settled there. I'm just going to add a bit of water to that. And the great thing is, all of them come out different. You don't know what they're going to come out like. I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow, red, even crimson. I was going to say yellow then. Okay. Tiny bit more water in the middle. Then what I'm going to do is take another piece of watercolour paper. This is just plain. And I'm going to lay it on the top and press it down. Now can you see how all the water and colours are coming out of the edge? That's totally fine. And what you want to do is you want to get your cloth and you just want to mop up the edges. And then you'll see when I pull this off. You've got another piece that's got the colours onto it. See how this is pooling in the middle? It dries really beautiful like this. So I'm going to do another one on this side. This is another clean piece of watercolour paper. Just mop up the excess. Now, can you see how there's white bits that are appearing? You can just go ahead and just mop up another part of it. See how you've got that gorgeous colours coming on it now. So really, out of doing one piece, you can create lots of different pieces by keep mopping and um, squeezing the water. I think I'll leave that one. I kind of like it. I might just, where that white bit is in the middle, I might just put a little bit in the middle. Oh, and now it's running. And now I should have left it. You see, it's all about experimenting. You don't know how it's going to come out. Now what you can do also is, with a different brush that's dry, you can just blend in the patches that are white if you wanted to I mean you, you can just leave them as well but I think it's quite nice to blend in the colours now depending on how wet your paper is will depend on how long it takes for it to dry see where this is really dark that's quite wet so it'll take um, a few hours to dry if you have to lift and move it try and keep it flat can you see how these two are bending they'll dry like that but then once they dry you can just flatten them under a book or something so don't worry about that um, and what I suggest you do is, if you've got something that's like wet like this, I'd lift it and move it away to a dry spot. Because can you see how wet it is underneath? So it's going to take even longer to dry. These are perfect for all sorts of backgrounds. Um, you can use them as they are. You can draw onto them. Now, if you want the colours to stay vivid and really, really bold... If you're doing this on a canvas, because you can do it on a canvas as well, what you need to do is mix a bit of PVA with your water and that keeps the colours really bold and strong. Otherwise they dry really quite pale. So that's just a quick brush tutorial for today. You can buy these online from all um, good art shops. You can, uh, like I say, get a pack of them in different colours already or you can buy your own individual ones. And also what's weird is the colours that are inside the pots don't necessarily look like the colour. So this is emerald green, can you see? Inside it looks yellow. So just be aware of that with your lids as well. Have fun. Please, please, please post in our Creative Circle group on Facebook, Dotty Delightful Creative Circle. 
what you've made i love to see what you've made have fun experiment play that's all you need to do so good luck with your experiment and i will see you very soon